You're listening to the Chandler Burton Podcast. Turn it up to 11 and rip the knob off. This is Chandler Burton. Welcome back to the Chandler Burton Podcast. I'm your host, Chandler Burton. It's been a while since I've done an episode. Yes, one of those, dude. I love it. <laughs> there we go. There's the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like my no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Awesome. Well, today on the podcast, it's been a while since I've done an episode. I've been kind of doing a lot of reactions and taking care of my back and stuff. So it's been a while since I've done an episode. But this, this one has been a long time coming because we've been talking about doing this for ever since pretty much I did a reaction to your band. We've been talking about this for a long time. I want to introduce my buddy, Ethan, the vocalist of the band Relapse. How you doing, bro? Very good, bro. Always good. Dude, see, that's what I love about you, dude. You're always so positive. And I love it, dude. I love feeding off your energy. It really helps, dude. Seriously. Yeah, dude. Dude. I'm here for it, man. I, I love it, dude. Yeah. Well, how you doing today, man? How's your day going so far? No, it's been good. It's like 25 degrees outside, so it's like real nice weather. Nice. Um, yeah, that's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> I, was, I was totally about to say, like, it's probably freezing, but I was like, oh, yeah, they're probably oh, different than, than no, me. No, no, it's, it, it's nice outside. Um, job didn't get delivered, so early days, so I was like, let's do the podcast. Absolutely. Now, man. get eight more. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, we've been trying to plan this forever because. I mean, I live, you know, I live in the United States and our time zones are completely different. So like when I'm asleep, it's like you're working. So it's like yeah. <laughs> trying to try to plan this out has been a really uh, it's been really difficult. But I'm glad I'm able to have you on, man. Seriously, I'm super excited. And again, thanks for taking the time. No, dude, to, yeah, yeah. To yeah, dude, absolutely. So we'll go and get started. And I kind of want to just first talk about how we kind of met so we haven't met in person obviously so how we no. kind of so how we, yeah so how we kind of met was so as you all know i do reaction videos and one of my subscribers his name he goes by j man i actually don't know his actual name but i'm friends with him on instagram and he's a really cool guy he uh do you know yeah. who he is yeah 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 he can like check heaps on instagram oh. he's, he's great person. sick dude that's awesome yeah, yeah. he's awesome that's he's awesome, good. dude. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He actually, he sent me a request. Well, he sent me like a song request on uh, Instagram. He's like, hey, bro, I think you'd really like the song. And it was uh, it was Sabotage. And uh, I was like, dude, yeah. And I that's when I first started. So I was like trying to get as much videos out as like possible. And dude. You're not the constant game, man. <laughs> yeah. You grind. So typical, bro. Like, you kill it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I appreciate sure. it. I've, I've, thanks, man. I've slowed down. A, I slowed down a little bit. I tried to do at least one video a day. I was doing like three, and that was that was already starting to get the burnout. And I was like, I gotta slow down. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta take it easy. But dude, I remember actually on that day when I did your guys' song "Sabotage," I was pretty burnt out, and I was like my third video that I was doing. But dude, that song got me so hyped, dude. I mean, I, I know you saw the reaction, and I. <laughs> I, dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this, this is sick. <laughs> dude, I remember, like, so good, yeah, man, I remember, and that's, like, legitimately, like, genuine, like, I, like, it's funny, I'll do, like, my intro, and then I'll talk about the song, but it's, like, when the song's going, it is so, it gets, sometimes the endorphins just hit you, dude, and you're just like, man, and that song hit, I, I seriously, that's the best song. That's the best song for music when it just connects with you, dude, I know. Seriously, man, it's amazing. So I remember doing that, and I remember you left your comment, 
And I was like, dude, this is cool. Like, it's cool, like, seeing, like, the guy from the band leave comments. And then I was like, dude, you should have me on Instagram. And you did. And then we started talking. <laughs> yeah. Dude. It's not Chinese. Yeah, man. And I think, too, also, I've reacted. I've reacted to all of your music. I seriously, I don't think I've missed a song. Yeah, yeah. I think, have well, I? Well, you, you haven't done the show, but I don't want you to do it. Do which one? I don't think you've done the demo, have you? I haven't done the demo. I actually saw it on Apple Music, but I haven't. I, so I haven't done the demo. Should I? Should I do the demo? Don't bother. <laughs> we got a little sneaky something like coming out from the demo, so. dude. You're like you're gonna something to react to, dude. For sure, man. You know I will. You know I'm gonna be doing it. So, but yeah, seriously, I. Can see it. Yeah, dude. It's I, coming. I'm ready, dude. I remember you sent me a little. Uh, little something something and i'm like dude this sounds sick this sounds really cool dude so yeah man it was awesome and so yeah after i heard sabotage like dude i freaking love these guys so i literally i did yeah i did your ep i've done i did the vice and i think i think that was is that everything that's yeah yeah that's it dude the vice yeah. was the vice was perfect i mean seriously i had such a good message yeah. for like nowadays i don't know when that song was written but for right now i was like dude, was, like, was 2019 well yeah. Yeah, I think mine was written end of 2018, recorded in January of 2019, and released then as well. Oh, sick, dude. Okay. Do you guys record your own music, or do you guys go somewhere to do it? So we, so the EP, from the EP and back, we did everything ourselves, and then for Sabotage and all this new stuff, we do, so we do, like, all live drums, all of our drums. drums. Sick. Um, uh, and... For the EP, we did drums, vocals, everything like that uh, with our guitarist, Jacob. Um, and then for Sabotage and all the newer stuff, we go to our mate, Jack Cartley. Mm -hmm. Massive shout out to him. If you're in Adelaide or anywhere, like he just, I can't recommend that guy enough. He's so awesome. Um, best, best environment. Like that was the first time I've ever been in the studio. And as soon as I was in the house, I just want to keep coming back because he just... Just makes you feel how comfortable and gets the best out of you, so it's awesome. And um, so yeah, we do vocals and drums with him, and then Jacob just gets out and bass as well. Sick, dude. That's awesome, man. It's always so, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's always nice when like you go to the studio, feel comfortable, and feel. Do you ever get like anxiety when you record vocals? Um, I think not really. No, I was nervous the first time I went to the studio just because it's like a different set of eyes on you. Normal, but I think, I don't know, as soon as you sort of get into it, and the, like he was just like super nice and was like helping me out through the process, and it was sick. And then as soon, after about 10 minutes, I was like, Yeah, this is dope. And I just get real G'd up in there and just do my thing. So I, I dig it, man. That's awesome. Your vocals are sick, dude. I mean, that's sincere. Like, you have a good singing voice, got some good lows, man. I'm like, dude, this guy's good. You're really good at what you do, dude. Seriously, I'm not trying to, Thank <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Just a practice every day, so it's yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely it's it, a it takes a lot of skill to do, man. Like, especially transitioning from oh, singing man. to screaming, dude, it's it's hard, yeah. it's really difficult. Vocals are that's a journey, it is, dude. Vocals are, oh. I know, dude. I've been doing it for I've been doing vocals myself since like I think 2010, so I've been doing it for a while. Um, trying to get better, oh, at, trying to get better at singing, but uh. Yeah, I've, I've started been... in twenty. Yeah, nice, dude. Look at you. You sound great, dude. Seriously, I mean that. Yeah, awesome, lots man. of practice. Yeah, dude. I watched the Melissa Cross uh, Zen of Screaming DVD. I don't know if you heard of that, but dude, that yeah, um, yeah. that worked Watch. for me, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, just... I just tried it. I when I first started, Mark Poyter is like my inspiration for like the heavier side. Like I've got a lot of inspiration, but Mark Poyter. Like I Valiance, Emergence Grounds, pretty much I Valiance, the Regents of Humanity, things life change. Nice, dude. Um, yeah, there's like they were. Well, I was def. Obviously, I'm a very deathcore influenced vocalist. Like back yeah. in the day, that's like all I listened to. So, yeah, I was like, I usually just tried to like when I first started, it was just trying to imitate people, really. Yeah, that's all I did. That's how I started. I didn't watch anything. I just tried to imitate people, and that was that was pretty much it. And then I think you just sort of, if I, like, that would be my advice to people is I wouldn't, when you first start, I feel like getting so sucked into all the anatomy of it and everything like that can be overwhelming. Um, 
But I think, man, like just trying to imitate people, different types of people, and trying to figure it out for yourself can be like so rewarding. Oh yeah, and yeah, I don't know. absolutely, dude. I it's just it's a journey, man. I feel like it's just a journey. But I know, yeah, I don't know. I feel like getting very sucked into all the anatomy of it and yeah, all these different things earlier on can be like a bit overwhelming for you. You can probably get stuck for sure. But absolutely. I think just, just winging it, man. Winging it just goes a long way in so yeah. many different aspects. Yeah, head, dude. So. Yeah, it definitely yeah. does, dude. That's kind of what I did. When I started doing it, I just started winging it. Like, I, dude, I wanted to sound just like uh, Danny Warsnop from Asking Alexandria. That was like my. Oh, dude, that's, well, 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 dude, that's who I wanted to sound like. And uh, I tried my best to go for it. But then I, as, as I got older, and started like molding my own style. I kind of was yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna kind of do what's comfortable for me. And uh, now I'm to the point where it's like it's so comfortable, and like I know what I'm doing. Like it doesn't hurt. It doesn't like do any of those things. So, but yeah, dude, yeah. I I did that all the time. I actually just did Eye Balance for my Patreon. I just did a reaction to their EP. I it's called talking about a band chat. Yeah, <laughs> I remember he said that he's just like, bro, Chandler is gonna react to um Eye Bow's EP. He said this is gonna crush him, and I said. That is my all time. That is my that is my favorite EP of all time, man. Like that is really? changed. Yeah, that changed my life. That EP. The I one, listened to it when I was fifteen. Really? I think I was fifteen when it came out and heard it. And they sent me the Pillars of Ruin, and oh my god, that whole EP, man, just yeah, that that stuck with me. Dude, yeah, the lyrics are on. Um, totally was super dark lyrics but i think honestly you could take kind of take what they're saying and try to put a a positive spin on it because i really like and do it all dude if you like I'll, i can send you the link don't watch the whole thing but i said seriously i uh, i loved it man it was super heavy and like the lyrics were just so kind of scary but it kind of like opened my eyes to like dude you know what you know life life is kind of worth living man and it kind of opened my sometimes i try to take a negative and turn it into a positive and i think was yeah like, i think you're not yeah, so something like that. Yeah. Optimism mm -hmm. is like, if you can be optimistic, you are one step ahead of just being blissful. For sure. And music really helps me do that. That's something that I really relate to. Mm -hmm. I've always learned to make things personal. So, like, if you can make it personal for yourself, then that's when you really want to start, like, becoming a better person. So, like, people will always give you, like, advice on, like, do it like this, do it like that. But that's because it works for them. But, like, for me, like, like music, writing songs, like, that is what makes it personal for me. And once I can relate to it, dude, that's when I really want to push forward and won't, when I want to, you know, keep trying my hardest. So, yeah, dude, music yeah, um, sure. is amazing what it can do. Like, it, it's incredible. It's seriously awesome. some of the best medicine, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Dude, it's amazing, man. Well, awesome, dude. Well, that was a good intro. I'm super excited. I uh, We talked a little before. We do want to make this a two-way thing, kind of get to know – one another even though we've been chatting like through instagram like forever but it's cool to like you know actually see uh in person and talk and yeah dude i'll just have questions for you and we'll just kind of learn about each other go back and forth and i'm super excited man i'm really excited for this one i'm super stoked <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be good yeah man i'm excited okay so got a few questions here and then we'll uh we'll just we'll just pop it off dude so first one is just Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, you know, what do you do for work? What are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do in your spare time? And then, of course, I can share with you what I do as well. So, um, I'm a carpenter, qualified carpenter, manager second fix and eaves. That's what I do for work. Hobbies, man, like, I used to play footy when I was a kid, like mm -hmm. AFL, but I don't, that didn't really interest me. Mainly just work, but, dude, I'm a very massive Call of Duty fan. Like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Grind, I grind pod, like, like the competitive side of it. Like I'm massive into like the CDL, like Call of Duty, like the actual like COD League is like what I'm into. That's like my sports. Like people like soccer and everything like that. I'm so invested into like that. So that's sick. you can catch me playing like league play. I'm probably gonna get into game battles matches like hell soon. Game nice dude. Yeah, I just like yeah, cause I'm yeah. It's good. I'm a little, I'm a bit competitive. I just that's like cool. competing. Yeah. So I, yeah, put it into card and I just. That's awesome. It's dude. good. What do you, uh, what, do you, do you. what do you play on? I play Xbox. Xbox? Oh. Hope we can still be friends. I have, I'm, I'm a PlayStation guy. Hope we can still be homies. Oh, okay. Okay. You know. Right. So, so, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not into that one. Like, they're the exact yeah. Same thing. They're, they're literally the exact. 
Yeah, and you can do crossplay. I don't play Call of Duty, but I know you can do crossplay on it now, so I think it's pretty cool. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I didn't know that you were such a competitive uh, gamer. That's cool that you're. Uh, that's cool that you're a gamer in general. I play video games too. Yeah. I think everybody does, but that's cool, man. Like, do you? Uh, did you say they're going to play in some tournaments and stuff or stuff like that? Is that what you're going to do? I just, I just want to get into like the more competitive side. So I usually just play like league plays and yeah. stuff. And I want to start like, games about the snatches where you can do like pages and stuff. Like I just think it'd be fun. That's Not cool. trying to promote gambling, but yeah. I'm no, fine. no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. I, uh, it's not something I'd recommend, but yeah. That's hilarious, dude. Do you play. Um... Do you play the newest? Is it, is it Modern Warfare or do you play like Warzone and stuff? Is that what you play? Nah, I'm not. I try. Like, I'm, I sometimes do, but it just annoys me. Like, Warzone just gets annoying. It does. And it's too. You find it a little too slow paced for me. Like, the reason I really like COD is because I'm a very fidgety person. Like, I just. I'm always, like, constantly doing something, moving, like, wiggling my fingers or toes or yeah. down to my knees. The very upbeat person. So, COD is so, like. So fast paced for me, and like rapid thinking. I just like, I just feel of it. Like, I like making the decisions, like quick thinking on the spot, and like, yeah, yeah. that's sick, dude. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool, man. I, uh, dude, I used to play Call of Duty all the time. I stopped, I, I stopped playing probably around Black Ops 2 was the last Call of Duty that I played like a lot. I haven't played it in a while. My favorite game on it was pro. I really liked Gun Game. That game was pretty fun. Um, I'm, fun dude, that game, dude, I got really competitive too. I was like, I got to the point because there were some days where I did really good, and then other days I would do terrible, and I'm it just make me it just ruined my day if I did terrible, dude. Yeah. Oh, it was awful, but that's cool, man. That's awesome. That's yeah, really, really cool. My mom, my mom, my mom, my mom sometimes comes in. She's like, because I. <laughs> I'm just a very, I'm a very loud person, and yeah. I because I've got a headset on and it's like cranked. Yeah, you, you can't really hear. So I start talking a bit louder, and I yeah. get a little bit. Like, we start losing. Yeah, dude. I just get held passionate. Get held passionate and into it. Yeah, <laughs> I love that, dude. Yeah. Dude, I'm the same way, man. I'm the same way with video games. I do the same thing. I, I love video games. I play mainly like single player type games like i play like a lot of legend of zelda i'm a big nintendo guy too so like legend of zelda yeah. um i love like, Phantom Hourglass and the DS. oh my god that's my favorite ds game Fan phantom hourglass yeah dude heck yeah man i haven't played that game in forever i just finished actually i just beat skyward sword because it came out on the switch i never bought it for the wii because i didn't like the motion controls but they switched it so you could play with button controls Dude, I freaking loved it, man. I beat that game in, like, two days. I was so addicted. I was like, I'm just going to power through this, man. So good, That's dude. Sick. Yeah, man. I love yeah, I that. honestly thought about buying the DS and getting Phantom Hourglass just to play it again. Yeah, dude. There's I haven't good... played it in, in, like, over a decade. Yeah, dude. I mean, there's that game. I mean, the Ocarina of Time's on there, Majora's Mask, A Link Between Worlds. I think I had some good stuff on the 3DS, mm. dude. I'm like, dude, I, I honestly, when I had the 3DS... I didn't even use the 3D. I just played it because the games were like super sick. I was I like, didn't I'm the 3DS. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those, man. Dude, a funny story. So the DS Lite came out when I was like six years old, and my mom said that I could. So I saved up all my like 20 cent coins, 50 cent coins, 10 cent coins. Yeah. I walked into my mom gave me in the morning off of school, like just for a couple hours. I walked into Kmart with my Bart Simpson suitcase full of toys on the release of the like first Nintendo DS Lite, nice, and dude. I bought it and was sitting there for like an hour while they were like counting all these like silver <laughs> coins and stuff. And then she dropped me off at school. I went home and I just smashed Nintendo. Dude, I know, man. Seriously, that's what I did too, man. Like I remember when I got it, I, dude. I didn't. I brought it to school. Never paid attention. That's all I did. Dude, played a ton of Mario Kart. Oh, played Metroid Prime. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't supposed to. But oh, I did anyway. Yes, that was so good. Dude, I know. It was such a good game, dude. Mario Seriously. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, dude. I love that stuff, man. So yeah, I'm I'm a single player guy. Like again, I like Legend of Zelda, Mario. I also like on the PlayStation. I love like Uncharted, The Last of Us, like games like God of War, games like that. So, yeah. yeah, that's what I play. I like this. I didn't like the Assassin's Creed as well. I'm just at the point now. Like I used to play Siege, like a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Oh yeah, my mate and. One of my mates and I, so we used to have like a five weeks. One of my mates, Alan, 
Him and I tried playing it again because a new season was out, but it's too it's too slow for me now. We both just love Call of Duty because of how fast paced it is. Like I need like quick. Yeah. If it's too slow, I, it's like not stimulating enough for me. But when it's fast, I'm in like my mode because it's just so quick, and I'm just a very like quick person. Yeah. So yeah. What about uh, are you a are you a Halo guy? You excited for the new Halo game? Yeah, I love Halo. Yeah, I love Halo. Dude, Halo is cool. Yeah. The new one it got delayed a little bit, but it looks pretty good from what I saw. It was pretty cool. So, it looks awesome. Yeah, man. And dude, honestly, one thing about Xbox, I will say, and like, honestly, I really like PlayStation a lot because I love the exclusives for it. But dude, you can't beat that Game Pass deal, dude. That's like the best deal. And any, oh, it's amazing. My friend, my my buddy Kyle, he tells me all about it. I'm like, dude, that's a great deal. You get so many good games. You get so many good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah. man, that's awesome. Dude. I think I, I want to prefer the Xbox controller over the PlayStation one, but I think it's just because I'm so used to it. Yeah, for sure. But I'm honestly, I'm honestly thought about just getting a PC and upgrading that like hectic, and then just play it on PC with a controller because it's so much better. There you go. That's what my sister does. She I, plays. She plays Call of Duty on the PC. Yeah. I think PC just like overtakes all because there's just so many things. It does for sure, dude. I I really honestly wanted to get a better PC because I really wanted to play uh, Cyberpunk 2077, and it only ran good on PC because I had it for PlayStation 4. I have a PS5 now, and dude, I could not play that game. But the only way I could play it was on PC. But I don't, I don't have a powerful enough PC to play it. I was really bummed because I was like, "Gosh dang it!" So yeah, PC trumps all, dude. I mean, it really does. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah. So that's cool, man. I, that's awesome to hear. See again, I had no idea. That you play Call of Duty and stuff, so that's super cool, man. I like that oh, a lot. I'm so competitive scene of Call of Duty, man. Like, I I watch it like every time it's on. Like the I can't I don't I don't usually stay out because when it like when the majors and stuff like the tournaments come on, it's always like I'm usually asleep, so it usually just gets uploaded to YouTube. So I'll wake up and just stream the whole thing and just watch it. Yeah, there you go, dude. It's perfect. I used to do that. Sick. Yeah, I used to do that with all the time. Like I used to do. Uh, I watch a lot of Super Smash Brothers, like professional people play, and it's just amazing. I am like in awe of how I good love they are. Sport, Dude, yeah. But yeah, Call of Duty is the only esports that I've liked. Like I'm, I tried watching like the Halo, like the Halo one was pretty sick. Yeah. I used to watch Halo, but I'm mainly into like COD, just just flat out COD, just love the it, COD dude. scene. Yeah, it's- dude. But let, yeah, let me ask you this then. Uh, are you excited for the new Call of Duty Vanguard? Comes out like November. I think it comes yeah. out next month. Is it, is it going back yeah, to no, World War Two? I actually haven't even seen the trailer for it. I just know about it. Does, but it's on the Modern Warfare engine. It's pretty good. Okay. I played the beta. I grinded the beta. Oh, so this okay. Is pretty sick. sick. I really like Cold War. So yeah. um, I went off. COD. I went off COD for ages just because I wasn't really enjoying it. Like I liked Black Ops Four. I hated Modern Warfare. Like yeah. the squad sport sucked. Like, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was crap. I didn't like it. Cold War was awesome. I really liked Cold War. I hated it when it first came out. And then I gave it a shot, like, midway through the year. And I was like, yo, this is actually sick. Like, it's it keeps better now. <laughs> so I started grinding it. And then, yeah, the Vanguard beta, I was like, yeah, this will be awesome. Sick. It feels nice. So I'm keen to, keen to play it when it comes out. Sweet, dude. I'll be asking you. You'll be the first person I ask how you're liking it. Because I know you played the beta. So, yeah, dude, when it comes out, I'll be shooting you a message. Man, like, dude, how is it? As long as... as- as long as, as long as ranked play is straight up, like I hope that as soon as they drop it, there's like a league player on ranked play because pub, pubs get so boring after a while. Yeah, for sure. Have you thought about, do you stream video, like do you stream on Twitch at all? Uh, no, I've thought, dude, I've honestly thought about making like a YouTube channel and like doing Twitch Twitch streaming and stuff. Dude, I'll be your first subscriber. Like, <laughs> dude, you know I will be. I do. I, yeah, I've actually been making a list of all these different YouTube video ideas that are like that could be sick. So Dude. yeah, I've got I got tons of stuff on my mind, like music wise. I'm gonna make solo music stuff. Are I've you come really? up with, like all these? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm coming up with all these different innovations. So like, I'm trying to think of stuff that no one's ever done before. So yeah, I've got I've got some cool ideas that I'll be writing down. Yeah. That's yeah. that's dope, dude. I I don't know how much you could talk about that, but I'm like, that's awesome, man. So you're doing solo stuff, and you're doing stuff with relapse. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah, good man. Just... Maybe 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 after the podcast, I'll tell you some uh, stuff that I've got. Sounds good. Awesome, dude. 
awesome. So yeah, dude, cool man. I would. That's exciting, dude. For sure. Yeah, we'll talk after. For sure. That's awesome. Cool man. That's awesome. That's really cool. Again, I love like starting off like when you could bond about like you know video games and music. Like already, I'm like, dude, this guy is this guy's a champion. Champ among champs, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Legend, bro. Yeah, dude. All right. So, uh, so jump to the next question here. I actually don't know this. So I'm really excited to learn about this. So how did, um, so how did relapse, how did it start? Is this your first band? Are you the creator? Yeah, this is my okay. Yeah. So, so it goes back. Um, I was in high school when it first sort of started. So all the, all of my bandmates, I'm the youngest, I'm 21 and the rest of them are like 25. Okay. 26, like, they're all, they're old, they're ancient, they're ancient. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're all older than me, and so Jacob was in this band. I actually suggest you check him out, because you probably like it. He was in a band called Brycliffe, okay. which is a just a deathcore band from, like, South Australia. And mm-hmm. when I was, like, 16 years old, when I first started doing, like, vocals, I'd go to shows. And just get mic grabs and stuff because I enjoy it. I just enjoy doing vocals. If I knew the words, I'd be up front. And, like, you know, you get past the mic and stuff. And I just would do vocals like, in the mic, obviously, because I like, just do that stuff. And um, that band ended up breaking up. And I remember I got a message from, and like, I sweated Brian Like, I went to like all their shows when I found out about them and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so when that band broke up, Jacob, the guitarist, like, messaged me. And he said, dude, like, I've got some songs that, like, I want, like, and he wants to keep doing music. He said, I've got some music. Um, Would you be keen on, like, doing vocals on it? And I was like, yeah, man, for sure. Yeah. And this was in, like, 2017. So we did Ill. Ill on the demo was the first song I ever did. And I was, like, 17 at the time. I went to his house. We recorded it. So sat on it for, like, a year. We didn't do anything after that. I think it was just because he was – um. I think he was still in uni and doing stuff, and I was still at school. And then it went from, like, zero to 100 in 2018. Um, I remember a group chat was started. Brad, Andrew, and our old guitarist, Sid, he, they all, like, got put in, and, like, it just went from zero to 100. Like, one minute we were just sitting on it, next minute we're, like, in the talks of, like, oh, yeah, more songs coming. It was like, oh, my God, like, we've actually got, like, a band now. And it yeah. just escalated from and then we just yeah recorded songs, made songs, and that that's pretty much it. That's how it formed. That's cool, dude. That's really it, awesome. It was, just, it was so it was so weird. We were, it, it was so dead. It just ended like I can't. Yeah, it just went from zero. To, like, it was just like, getting on the train, and then it just went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like man, it went. It was just like one like one day nothing was happening. Next day it's like oh yeah, here's more songs. There's all five of us. We had like a band and stuff. And it was just it was mental. That's that's cool, man. It sounds like I mean, it sounds like it was a fairly kind of smooth process. Nothing too crazy, but it sounded like it was all right for you guys. So it was yeah, it was pretty natural. So Brad, Andy, and Jacob all knew each other, and Brad knew Sid. I'm pretty sure that's how it was. And then okay. yeah, we all just sort of yeah met each other, and it was sick. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's cool. And it looks like you all get along pretty well and everything. It looks good, man. I mean, you guys oh, seem yeah. to... That's awesome. That's probably a I'm, good feeling. I'm so thankful because, like, yeah. So, um, Sid isn't in the band anymore, but um, we all had chemistry. There's no bad blood there as well. It's just yeah. music, like, musical differences. It, it happens. Um, But, yeah, Jacob, Andrew, and Brad, and myself, we all have, like, the best chemistry. Like, awesome. I can't. I'm so grateful for it because, yeah, I know heaps of bands, like, butt heads, like, the members butt heads, and there can be some animosity and stuff. But with us, it's all, like, we're just, like, brothers, really. I love that. Or we just have a laugh. It's just, yeah, positive vibes all around. I love that, dude. That's fantastic. So, are you guys, you guys aren't signed, are you? No, nah, we're completely independent. Independent. Do you want to stay that way? Or are you guys looking for a label, or? No, nah, we're not looking if, if an offer comes up that we like. Then sick, but other than that, no. I, we we sort of think like we'd rather a label come to us because I feel like if a label yeah. comes to you, that means that they want you. If you go to a label, they might try and take a bit more. You know what I mean? I don't know. No, I I've never that. been like yeah, none of us have ever been like signed or anything. But yeah, that's just sort of our like our pro like mindset with it is like well, we're happy doing what we do, so 
That's cool. Yeah. That, that respect for that, dude. Because I mean, I know a lot of people like their first thing is like when they're a band, it's like, dude, we got to get signed. But it's like, dude, like, it, there's a lot of bands right now. There's a band you're probably familiar if you like Deathcore, freaking uh, Brand of Sacrifice. They were signed, uh, dude. Yeah, and now yeah. they're independent and they're doing so well for themselves. I'm like, dude, I mean, they're they're dude. That's Lifeblood crazy. was an incredible album. So I'm like, dude. That, that one, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really listen to Death Call these days just because it's so saturated with the same sure. stuff. Yeah. There's nothing innovating in Death Call that I find anymore, so I just get bored of it. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I love hearing stuff that's more innovating and different. So that's why I like, like, Sleep Token. Oh, dude. And I'm more into Metal. But yeah. yeah, I love, I love Sleep Token. They're just so different and it's just so unique. I like hearing unique stuff because deathcore everyone just does the same vocal style like just tunnel throat yeah blast speech break tunnels and it's like i don't know you, you i just feel like you can't set like if i listen to two different bands you, you might find it hard to tell who is who because it's just sort of the same yeah, yeah so you, i just yeah you get bored bored of bread of sacrifice man they are top notch dude so different yeah oh my so gosh heck. It's insane. Oh, I know, dude. I think Lifeblood. I prefer oh, their last album. Yeah, it's so good, dude. It's way good. Yeah, I, I was. You know, it's funny too. I kind of got into them a little late because I listened to their album like God Hand. I was like, this is pretty sick. And then Lifeblood came out. And I was like, yeah, dude. It's still, it's still like heavy, but like it just sounds so different. And I'm like, it's actually really cool. And I, I saw a lot of bands actually saying like, Brand Sacrifice is really like changing the game, dude. Because they're like different. They're still heavy. And Dude, I, I think they're awesome. And dude, freaking that, that last song they did with uh, the dude from Under Oath, I was like, I never thought something like that would happen. Like, I think it was Enemy was the song. That song was sick, dude. So sick. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Um, yeah, Sid, our guitarist, put me onto them when the EP, I think it was Eclipse. I think the EP's called Eclipse. Eclipse, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah when, that hit, when that came out, he's like, bro, you got to listen to this band. Holy shit, this is yeah. like the most insane. That's what I've heard in a long time. Yeah, it's sick, dude. That's awesome, man. I do really, really like what you said, though, that you that you rather have the label come to you. And, like, I think that's cool. Have you guys, like, done... I know you have that one show coming up that I commented on with that picture. Do you guys... Have you guys done, like, a yeah. full-on, like, tour? Like, have you guys, like, toured, like, a couple months at a time or anything like that? No, we haven't, no, we haven't done a tour yet. We meant to have tours last year, but COVID sort right. of destroyed that. We're going got off at our EP, but yeah, COVID sort of stopped that. But yeah, we've definitely we've got a tour coming up. It's not announced yet. Yeah, okay. But yeah, we've got stuff for no next year. Cool. Awesome. Hey, dude, that's going to be right just, around the corner. It's just yeah. But yeah. That's okay. Stop. Oh, yeah, next year will be a big one, though. We've got, we're releasing a lot of music next year. Got some wicked ideas for how we're going to release it. So yeah, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited, dude. Are you guys. Can you say this? Are you doing an EP or like an album? Can you say that, or can I not ask that? You, you, we're not you, doing an album. We're not doing an album, but we're doing like a weird way of an EP. I'll just say that. Cool. What about you? You you're doing music, aren't you? You're recording stuff. I am. Yes. Yeah. So I uh, so I gotta wait till I'm trying to uh, get my back a little bit better before I go record um with my friends my friend Miguel I've known him my my entire life and he's really good at making music so like he literally just makes everything and then I'm just gonna go uh record it so it's it sounds really yeah. cool um I write lyrics all the time and so I have tons of ideas what I want things to sound like uh we're gonna try to do an EP yeah. like three songs nothing too crazy um just again completely independent but uh, I'm excited, dude, because I was in a band in high school. Uh, <laughs> it was like a it was a post hardcore band. We try to sound we try to sound like Attack Attack and Asking Alexandra. That was like the sound, and it, was, it wasn't very good. We were called we were called the Lighthouse. That was the name of our band, and we have a song called The Story So Far. It is on YouTube, and I will send it to you if you want to listen to me scream. This is link it to me. You better link it to me. Yeah, I will. I'll send it to you. <laughs> I don't, and obviously you probably feel the same way. Like when it's older music, you're kind of just like, like you're proud of it, but you're like, I don't need to listen to this again. Like it's not a song I promote. Oh, that's, like, yeah, that's me with everything. Like before sabotage. <laughs> really, I liked your guys' EP. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it was really good. Oh, it's it's it? heavy. I think I think music. My music taste just evolves very yeah. quickly and changes. 
That's cool. So, yeah, but okay. this newer stuff, advertising and onwards is like, like I think it's just finding our sound and we're really refining it. And I think we're sort of yeah. hit that mark now. And we're like, yeah, this is definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'm, ex- I'm excited, dude. I think that's cool too because like, and it's cool that you that you say that your music change it changes all the time, so that way you're not making the same song over and over. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's really cool. And again, dude, you know what's funny is that you actually introduced me to Sleep Token when you recommended Alkaline, dude. After that, I went yeah. down the rabbit hole and I just listened to like all of their stuff, and I really like their new mm-hmm. album. It's not generally what I listen to, but dude, their new I album, love- dude, their song Atlantic, it actually uh-huh. it actually made me cry. I'm not like the first song. Yeah. Dude, yeah, <laughs> got got this brother the car um, right here, man. <laughs> I yeah, dude, that album is like flawless for me. I've seen heaps of like people that are like hating on it, and I'm like, man, I don't it's know like why. when I first, I was like, oh my god, this is dude. Did you? I like- didn't like fall yeah. for. Me. I didn't like fall for me. That was the only song that I didn't really like. Yeah, the rest of it, like, this is perfect. It's amazing, dude. Did you like uh, Sundowning, yeah. their first album? I assume you like that one. Yeah, that was really good. That dude. was. Very good album. It is good. It's like, dude, it's kind of nice that it's like they only really have two albums, so it's so easy to go back and like learn all the songs and stuff like that. So, dude, yeah. I gotta, I gotta say thank you for Alkaline because I listen to it all. Like when I'm doing stuff around the house, I'll just put it on, and just like sing the song, just like it's just so catchy and it's so different. And I was like, I just, really, yeah. I love his singing. I think it's incredible. It's- I think it's just a perfect gateway music for people that aren't into heavy music because it has heavier elements, like the real low tune, like gent sort of bounce and oh, groove. Yeah. But it's not like it is heavy, but it's not screamy heavy. So I think like people that don't listen to like metal, if they gave say their new album a go, yeah, and I reckon like if they, yeah, I think that they're like a perfect gateway band for sure. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Yeah. Especially with like Alkaline, for sure. I think that's a great dude. My mom likes that song. Like I showed her, like, mom, you gotta listen to this. Like, Dang, this... Like yeah, she's like, this is a bop, dude. I'm like, I know, it's good, <laughs> so good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah I got my mom as well. Yeah, dude. I actually showed a lot of people. My my uncle, he's a pretty big rock. He likes everything, but I showed him Sleep Dome. Like, dude, you just gotta check out the album. And he's like, dude, this is awesome. I was like, I'm, I'm telling you, it's because my friend Ethan. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what would you? What would be like your top like five favorite bands? My top favorite right now? Yeah, like as of now, yeah, like right now. Oh man, <laughs> I that's a, I like how you ask me questions too. That's pretty sick. Wage was favorite. Wage was your favorite. Yeah, Wage was my favorite, and I know like I know they aren't changing the game per se, but dude, I I I. Oh, I they got awesome. They good live as well. Dude, they're so good live. They're awesome. I've seen them. I seen them. Twi- I saw them twice, and uh, they were they were awesome. I, uh, I, dude, I just relate to their their. I really relate to the lyrics, and I don't know. It's just something about it. Just really molds with me personally. Like a lot of their songs, like even their album Pressure, which I know a lot of people didn't like that one. There are still songs on there that really hit home for me, and uh, I just, yeah. dude, yeah. So for sure, like Wage War is my number one. Um, if we're talking only current bands right now, like my favorite band of all time, like obviously we got like Metallica, Slipknot, and Pantera. Like those three will oh, never, yeah. those three will never, they're always going to be at the top. But if we're talking current, um, yeah, Wage War, probably Fit for a King. I like Fit for a King a lot. Um, I love Fit for a King. Thank you, dude. I love Fit for a King as well, man. A lot of people get their last album a lot of crap. Did you like The Path? Did you listen to it? It's sick, dude. Thank you. I thought it was sick too. Everyone seems to hate it. I'm like, I thought it's yeah, I thought it was dope. Yeah. Oh man, I probably era actually era would be up there as well. Their self title is incredible. Um, love yeah. love era. Probably currents. I think currents is an incredible band that nobody yeah. talks about. Yeah, they're out there with one of my dude. Yeah, they're amazing. yeah, they're definitely. And then probably if we're just talking metalcore, I probably oh man, see, I, I'm gonna well, it's not it's not a bad choice, but uh, later on I'm gonna be like I should have said this other band, but probably probably Polaris Polaris however you say it, you know, yeah, that's it. dude, you know, yeah, awesome, dude, incredible. I dude, the death of me was one of the best metalcore albums I heard in a long time. I think I think it's just brilliant. Everything about it, yeah, is great. they're like just perfect. Very- 
Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. To and that live show. Insane. You want to hear mine? I see. Yeah, I, I've seen Polaris live. They're with. Uh, it was Dayseeker, which I love, by the way. Dayseeker, Polaris, uh, like Moss the Flames, and then Wage War. It was on their pressure tour. And that was a tour. Oh my god, yeah. like Moss the Flames, their newer stuff is so much better than their thank older stuff. Dude, and dude, thank you. Their song is so heavy. Dude, yeah, their new song was so heavy. I was like, what happened? I was like, dang. <laughs> there was, yeah, I was like, what? Because I did a reaction to it, and I was I, I was like, I, my mind was blown. But I was like, this is weird, going from, like, Dark Divine to this. I was like, dang, you guys, like, went, remind me of, like, Fit for an Autopsy a little bit, which, by the way, they're one of my favorite heavier bands. I love Fit for an Autopsy. <laughs> Like, dude. Uh, yeah, the guy collapses, like falls out. Dude, yes, <laughs> sounds so good. Yeah, All right, dude, I'm ready. I'm ready to hear yours. That's actually one of my questions I was going to ask you later, but since we're doing it now, I'm ready. I'm ready to hear your top five bands. So, all time favorite band would be Bad Omens. That nice. Noah is my Noah is like I know I said Mark Mark Pointer was like my favorite was Heavy Heavy Vocals, but. These days, like now, Noah Sebastian, I is like my god tier like can't get better than him in my opinion i think he's just phenomenal um Sick. probably say the word alive oh i love that there do they word have a, Sick. they have a new song coming out called wonderland drops in like two days Come yeah out. yeah yeah they, they, they have a was oh i loved it so dude, good dude um, i sorry to cut you off but i agree i, I know people were complaining that it's kind of not as heavy but dude no way out hits I so hard for me, dude. I don't even care that it's not heavy. It just sounds good to me, dude. I'm not too into heavy anymore. I think I've gained everything. I think subconsciously my brain is like we've gained everything we can from heavy music. Sure. Like I don't I can't see as of now, I can't really see like any other inspiration I can get from heavy music. So now I'm like, like I just sort of am molding into like all these other different stuff, like more singy stuff and what that sort of thing. So, yeah. I love um, it, dude. Yeah. Normandy? You should react. I feel like you should react to some of Normandy stuff. They're from Sweden. That okay. band is like God tier. Yeah. God tier band. Sweet. Um, you can send me something, I'll do it. Yeah, dude. I've got a few songs. Uh, what else? The Plot in You. I love that new album. Dude. Landon. Good. Landon is like. Landon and Noah, I'd say, are my two fave vocalists. And like Landon, just as a musician, like just him as a musician, as a whole, like, producing, mixing, all of that stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. Insane, bro. Insane. Good choices, man. So, all, so talented. Um, and then for the fifth, I don't know, man. I'd have to look at my Spotify. <laughs> I know. It's hard to put on the spot. There's so many good bands out there, dude. So yeah, that's many a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Maybe, like, at the moment, maybe, like, Sleep Token. No, that's great. That's a great choice, man. I think the big, big spot could be interchanged in so many. But the, yeah. the four, the plot in the Normandy, the world, it's like solidified up there. Perfect. I love great choices, man. Yeah, dude, I'll ask you how you think about the new Word of Life song. I'm going to do a reaction to it. Comes out, I'm going to do it next week. I'll, so. com I'll, I'll, I'll comment on the YouTube video and listen to it with you. Dude, great. I'll let you know when it's going to drop. I uh, it, It'll probably be next week. Cause I have, uh, I'm doing impending doom tomorrow and then I'm doing some other stuff for Patreon. I'm doing, uh, doing every time I die, I'm doing them. And then I'm doing bound in fear for Patreon as well. So I got, I got that to do. Uh, I'm super excited about both of those. Yeah. So yeah. And then, yeah, so I'll, I'll do it next week. So yeah, I'll let, I'll let you know when it drops. Yeah, for sure, dude. Bound in fear, man. That man fucks me up every time I listen to yeah. it. It's just so <laughs> I know. They're super heavy. I was like, "Dang, these are." I've done a few reactions to them before. I was like, "Dude, I'm just gonna do the. I'm just gonna do the album for Patreon, dude." I figured, why not? It's so freaking good, dude. So, awesome, yeah. man, dude. That's super cool. Okay, I'm excited to learn about this one as well, and we can talk about because I write lyrics too. So, so I guess my this is a two part. Yeah. This is a two parter for you. Um, so what do you want relapse to be known for? I mean, you're you're a really, and I, I promise you, I'm not trying to. Yeah, we talked about it before. I'm not trying to, you know, make it all about you, even though it kind of is in a way. But I'm just saying, no, like, yeah. yeah, like you're a really, you're a really nice guy. You're super, you have a big heart, very kind guy. And I assume that you probably want to try to preach like 
somewhat of a positive yeah. message with relapse. So what, what would you want relapse to be known for? Yeah. So especially with this newer stuff, man, I'm sort of like, I want to make people feel invincible when they listen to my music or yes. relapse. I want people to be, because it's so sad, like the world is just filled with like negativity and sickness and like people like just like a whole victimization, like a victim complex of like just all this stuff. And it's like, man, like I want, when people listen to it, I want people to feel invincible and like, like I sort of want my lyrics to stick in someone's head and be like that voice that can like say that like you are strong enough, you are good enough. I want people to feel strong and I want people to be independent and just happy with themselves because that's who I am. I'm just I'm so independent, I'm so happy with like life and who I am. I'm just for people to be able to, you know, listen to it and sort of gain that like strength and like listen to it and say, like, you know what, like. At the end of the day, all I need is myself. I don't need anyone. If everyone dropped off of the earth right now, just had me, I could do anything. Like, nothing changes. Like, I want people to feel just so content with them and who they are. And I want people to be, like, comfortable with who they are and express that and just not change for anyone. Stay firm on what they believe in. Don't follow the herd. I've never been one to follow the herd or, like, blend in, I always want to like stand out and like, you know, people, yeah, I just yeah, that's that's sort of like where I'm trying to get out with this. I just yeah Dude. I want people to be strong because it's everyone's just so I find people are just a bit too like sensitive and like weak and it's no man like get upbeat like you are like so much stronger. I think people underestimate the power of their own brain and like what your brain is capable of. Because man, I've done when I went to therapy because I had a real tough time last year. I never felt anything like it. I was just so depressed and anxious every day because I was in just some toxic stuff. Yeah. And um, I never, I never accept. I think people accept that that's how they're going to be forever, or they just accept the sadness. And I was never one to accept that this is how I want to feel. So I would just do everything. I learnt, try to read about stuff and learn, like get informed on like what could be happening in my brain. And then I was like, I want to go to a therapist because I can't. Wait, I hate waking up and being in fight or flight mode like 24 7 and yeah. like breaking down. Like, that's just not me as a person. Like, if you had ever spoken to me last year, you wouldn't think that the person I am now is different to like, is the same as them. And I went to therapy and I learned stuff. I cut off the toxic tie that I had. And then, like, it's just like, it's a liberating feeling. And it's like, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't accept feeling sad. You shouldn't, like, you should, always try and motivate yourself to get past it and say, like, what can I do? Do I need help? Go get the help that you need, like, proper help. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just that's that's sort of the message I want. I don't want people to, like, play the victim, like, in sabotage. It's like I went through all that stuff, yeah. and it was just when I'm like, in the breakdown, it's like, you know, don't play the victim because I'm not a victim of what I went through, you know, I went through something and you take every, like, every bad thing that happens, you take it as a life lesson. I'm glad I went through all that pain and trauma, really, because that's what sabotage is about. I'm glad I went through all of that because it's like, I've learned, I've learned what I need. I've, I've taken that as a life lesson and I've said, okay, that happened. I now know what I need moving forward. You know, that's the past. And man, it hurt and it sucked what I went through, but I'm glad I went through that because I've seen that side and I know how to avoid that, what to look out for and moving forward. And that's the whole part of learning and growing. People go through something bad and they just stick onto it and ruminate about it, dwell on it, and stop moving forward. You have to get back on the horse. And I'm at the point now where nothing is going to keep me off of the horse. Like I'm just going to be very grounded in who I am. So, yeah. Amen, brother. I love that. That was a really good answer. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. That's a that's a great thing, man. I think that's really cool. I it just it just proves that you just want to help other people, and I think it's cool, man. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I and mean, you can do that through music. I, I I'm the same way. Like I I want to help anybody that I can, and if I can do that through music or my YouTube channel, like anything like that, like I just love because you know I've got I've got like messages from people from YouTube, like a private message saying like, dude, your video really helped me like what you said and like we'll just talk and like i don't even know who this person is and i'm like dude, if we can just have a conversation yeah. and just talk and just help somebody yeah it's a good feeling so much 
this like infinite amount of love to be spreading. Like, you know, it's not it's not hard to just be happy and positive and spread good vibes. It's literally effortless just to do that. So yeah. yeah. It really is, man. Yeah, just honestly, like being nice to people and just helping others, man. I mean, it's just, just it's just those simple things in life really make. There, I even talked about it in the video the other day where I was like, honestly, like, you know, we're all we're all gonna have like bad days, like that. It's just gonna happen. We're human. We're all gonna oh, feel. Yeah. yeah, but it's like the way you were saying. It's kind of like, dude, like there's so many things in life that are worth living for, and just doing like literally doing like a like the little things that we do, like you can make a quick 180 and your day can be a lot better. Like, dude, when I make, when I'm having a hard day, dude, I'll literally just go on a walk or I'll just like make a YouTube video and do it. Cause it's something I enjoy. And then I'm just like, dude, my day is like already a lot better. So it's like those little things can make a huge difference. I think a lot I mean, of people think about that. Yeah. It's super social, simple. Social media is a bad thing because people don't understand that it's like what you read, what you, you're like, you are a product of your environment. Right? Yeah. Like, that is, that's, that's your, brain is going to operate off of that like what it gets fed 24 7 is what is going to happen right your brain is going to rewire itself and it's going to like if you're soaking in reading negative stuff sad things like quotes on facebook about not being good enough like and you start to like believe that your brain if you start to feel that emotion your brain is going to like feed off of that so your brain like you need your brain to be your best friend because really i look at the brain as a dog and it needs to be tamed, right? A dog, when it's tamed, can be your greatest companion, your bestest friend, can like love you. And if it's not tamed, it's a pain in the ass. It's gonna annoy you. It's yeah. gonna make you crap because you're gonna get annoyed. You need to tame it. You have to, you know, be that like. You need to be in control of your brain. Your brain, like your brain, is your tool. You are not your own thoughts. You're not a pro. Like you're not like whatever your brain is telling you isn't true unless you want it to be, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, you're brave, if you're being negative on yourself, it's like, oh, I don't like that. Let's try and switch this around. You're going to just make your brain like, yeah, you are not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. no, 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 you are absolutely correct. Yeah. I think a lot of people, they, I mean, dude, that's all like a ton of people separate, that I see. You need, yeah. separate your, like, you need to separate yourself from your thoughts. Yeah. And take in what you want, you know, but put that wall in, and if it's something hell positive and helpful, yeah, that's a good thought, let's do it. Yeah. Your brain's a talk. It's not you. Yeah. No, definitely. The, for sure. And you know what's funny is like, I, I, it was funny. Every time I look at my old Facebook memories, I'm always like so negative. And I'm, so, I'm so like just the worst kind of person. But dude, lately, like anytime I try to share something, um, I just try to make it positive. I'll, even like, I, even for like one of my YouTube videos, like I always try to put a positive spin on everything. Cause dude, even like, watching some of the people's videos some of it's just like negative and it's like and like dude i just want to enjoy the music say say something personal and then move on with the day and i think like if we had more i'm not saying because of me but like if we had more of that on social media i think it'd be a lot better place because dude social media is a definitely a blessing I mean, without this we wouldn't be able to talk so i mean it's kind of like yeah I, i'm grateful for it's that it's a blessing like that yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah, because everybody wants to. People treat Facebook or Instagram kind of like their their journal, and it's like, look, I'm sorry you're going through all this, but it's like, dude, there is help out there for you. I, know, so I hate when people post that stuff. Like, if you need help, don't go to social media. Go get help. Yeah, go go you know? go to, go to therapist, and that's okay. It's terrible. That's right. It's not posting about that stuff and trying to use it as therapy is not going to help you you need to go see if you are struggling that bad go get help like it's yeah i just no i agree with you i hope i just want people to understand that it's just it's facebook isn't it's trash man i hate facebook if i didn't have a band i would delete social media yeah i understand that completely and it's like I it's, yeah i, I think it takes so much more than it gives I think it does too. So I, I limit myself. I limit scrolling on Facebook. The only thing I, I turn all my notifications off. The only notifications I have are my messenger notifications. And that's yeah. just to talk to the band. Cool. Apart from that, I just stay off of it. And like, if I go on Instagram, I usually scroll for a bit, reply to a couple messages, and then that's it. And Facebook, I really try and stay off Facebook because I think Facebook's the worst. Yeah. And I think it's cool that you that you're willing that you're putting yourself before all that because again so many people are so addicted to it and like it's that's like all that they do yeah. 
Yeah. It's so like read people's negativity. It's so it actually it started like triggering me and draining me because it's just like yeah, I just can't stand it. I don't want to be involved in that. I just yeah, I have to separate myself from that because it's just it hurts when you read like other people's problems or them just like whinging and complaining and being and seeing toxic stuff. It's like man, like yeah, get a grip. Like if you need help, fix yourself. Don't just yeah. No, I agree. But I will change, hopefully. Yeah, I agree with that, dude. I mean, they're like it's funny too. I always, I always told one of my friends this. I was like, dude, I feel like some people post. I feel like a lot of people post that kind of stuff on there because one, they don't really have anybody in their life to talk to, and they want people to like comment and say like, dude, I'm sorry what you're going through. Like, I feel like they want that. And again, like when anybody posts something like that, I'm not that guy to go like, why well, you gotta post? Like, obviously, I legitimately. It may be just me as a person. I legitimately do feel bad when they go through it. But at the same time, I'm like, I'd rather you post about your success story than tell me, like, what you're going through. Like, tell me that you went to therapy. Tell me that you did those things. And then that will inspire other people. I mean, dude, seriously. Like, I mean, I've been I've been to therapy, and it helps, dude. And I'm not afraid to say it. Like, it really, I needed it, and it helps, dude. No shame in it. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Nah, I agree. But I'm at the point now where I feel like, as a human, as a person, you have to be able to get through a majority, a high majority of your problems yourself. That's just how, that's, this is like, yeah. or everyone has different opinions on how they should live, but this is mine. It's like, I want to be able to get through everything by myself I, like, and ask for help if I really need it. But I don't want to rely on other people. I don't want to re- rely on people's validation. People, I feel like yeah. people get validation on social media and just want people to like you know they that's when they get their dopamine release and their self-esteem is based on how many likes they get how many people talking yeah. on that stuff saying like oh it could work so you need other people to validate you that's and yeah. like i just yeah i just i that, i don't want to be in that realm of stuff in, in that way of thinking and if if that works for you good on you but i just can't see it working out in the long run man like if, yeah. yeah if that works for something it does but i just think in the long run you're going to be a lot happier if you can give everything to yourself if you can be your best friend your lover like just everything you need to be like like content with just who you are yeah i completely it's agree so with you. Yeah. yeah and a lot of people always say that you got to love yourself first before you you, know, you got to do those things man and again there's so many things in life that are worth living for dude it's just we just got to go out it's like with yeah. anything like with anything in life like you got to like work for it and i always tell people that like dude i didn't just start doing i didn't do i didn't just start with like 2000 plus subscribers like i really worked for it and i really grinded and i really put in the work dude and it's like i always tell people it's like dude if you want it yeah thanks dude (laughs) you know yeah you you just got yeah you just got to work for it man i mean you work hard at your band and you want it and i i love that about you dude i think it's i think you have great morals i think you have a good outlook on the music and i think that's really i think that's really cool and i hope people listening to this will feel inspired to like want to like you know do whatever you want try love yourself you know i think yeah. you're i think you're but a good only, voice for that the only way you're gonna get better is by failing for sure the yeah. only way you're gonna progress is by making mistakes and failing and like growing that's the whole point of life is yeah it's just what a human is you make mistakes and you grow it's the Exactly. That's the course of life. Yeah. But yeah, in this series, like my lyrics are very straight to the point and I think that I'm a very like when I write I want it to cut deep because I'm just like in relapse with how I write my vocals, I want it to be aggressive and in your face and it's just like I feel like that's a good way to get a message through. Yeah. So new relapse is like the harsh reality and the harsh truth. Dude, and I feel like that's ready. Stick. Oh yeah, we're ready, yeah. dude. I'm more than ready. You know, I'm going to be reacting to every single song, and I'm going to be having a great, yeah, I'm, I'm having a great really time. Like, yeah, so, I'm gonna. It's yeah, it's not. It's not going to be pretty, but it's what people need to hear. So that's just yeah. And it, oh, I want yeah. If, you know, if, if it offends you, it offends you, but it, it comes from a good place. No, and it's dude. just a harsh. Dream. Yeah, Sorry. I don't. Yeah, you should never yeah, have. To, you should never have to sugarcoat anything. You know, just be honest. And I love that about your music, man. It's just honest. 
I'm staying true to my views and like it's I, I don't think it's gonna offend anybody, but it's just my way of thinking. It's like I just want it to sort of I just want to offer to like people a different perspective, especially in this day and age, because it's such a like everyone's social media is just it's brainwashing. Yeah. I want people to see a different side of things and like you know, maybe read my lyrics and go, oh, that's actually, like, this could, yeah, this sort of relates to me and, like, how I can get out of it and stuff. So, yeah. Sick. I'm excited, dude. Yeah. I'm excited to, I'm, 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 I'm excited to break it down, dude. Like, I'm excited to, like, the lyrics, yeah, break it all down and, like, talk about it with my YouTube audience, man. I'm super stoked yeah. for that. Your, video, your you... videos did really well, actually, like, view-wise. I'm still a smaller channel, but, dude, you guys, like, you guys are pretty good. Like I have like all likes, no dislikes. It's it's in the high two hundred views, I think. So my like, dang, it's pretty good for a smaller smaller channel. Yeah, dude. My like, dang, these guys are sick. <laughs> so yeah, man, for sure. I'm super. Yeah, dude. I'm really excited for that. So dude, that was a good conversation. I really like that. And one more thing that I'll add before I jump to the next question is like one thing that really helped me is realizing that everybody, because like I, I was kind of that way where I was like, I can't. I just can't move on. Like I'm stuck. But then I realized I was like, dude, I'm not, I'm not alone because everybody, whether, no matter what you believe is going to make mistakes and is going to fall. And that kind of opened my eyes going like, okay, it's not just me. You know, I can actually like press forward and like, I'm not the only one making mistakes today. Like, I don't know. That kind of helped me like jump out of that weird mindset that I had going like, okay, they're going to make a mistake. I'm going to make mistakes. And, dude, I've learned from all my mistakes. Like, honestly, I go through it all the time, and I'm just, like, I look back, and I'm, like, wow. I actually really did learn a lot. And if I didn't go through it, dude, I would be, like, still the same person I was, like, a couple years ago, which was not a very good person, if I'm going to be honest. So, it does work. Yeah. But, dude, like, in New Real House, I'm going after cancel culture as well. <laughs> I'm going after I'm I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try and shut some shit down but yeah dude, I just, i'm so excited I hate, <laughs> I hate, yeah, dude, i'm i'm going in bro <laughs> I'm but yeah i just yeah i don't i don't yeah i don't i just don't like this this culture in this day and age no, I, I think we're, we're a big step backwards and sort of toxic that's why i try and stay off a um social media like i feel like the world's lost the world we live in a society where you know, you have to be perfect. Perfection doesn't exist. It's never going to exist. But we expect everyone to be perfect. We expect that if you said something, people forget to understand that every week you change. You are not the same person as you were yesterday, yeah. months before, and years ago. So the stuff that you said back in the day, man, like people just, they, people have lost forgiveness. We can't forgive. We just try and like rid people and take them out of society that's what cancel culture is we f forget to learn that like or forget to understand that people make mistakes and you learn from mistakes that's how you grow that's the whole point of being a human being people yeah. have just lost the lost touch with what being a human is all about and they've just got in their minds just something that's so toxic and goes just against what being a human is and that's what i have yeah like, it triggers so much I got you, dude. Man, I'm excited to hear your new stuff. I, <laughs> I'm, yeah. ready, I'm ready, dude. I'm ready for you to shut down some haters and just give me the heaviest Chinese oh, breakdowns, dude. I'm ready, man. I got to say, too, dude, honestly, yeah. for you being 21, dude, you're really mature. I was not this way when I was 21. I'm 28, right? I just turned 28, and I just now started really learning about my life and being a more mature person. So, got to say, dude, you hold yourself very well because most 21-year-olds are not like this. <laughs> Just, 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 oh, being, just being honest, dude. <laughs> I'm still an idiot. Like I still. But dude, you're hilarious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, but you're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's just, awesome, yeah I, take, I just take. I mean, I don't take life serious. I don't really take it serious. I mean, yeah, yeah, go yeah. Ahead, go ahead, fun. Exactly, dude. I just yeah. Love, yeah, dude. Yeah. I love making people laugh. I love laughing. So that's awesome, dude. That that's I mean, true. yeah, yeah, and you're super funny. You to crack me up. Too many people laugh. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> You're awesome, dude. I love it. Well, dude, thank you for that. That was a really good, uh, really good. That was a really good part of the conversation. I'm glad we had that because I feel like a lot of people need to hear it. And I think I, I think it will help people for sure. I think it will be a really good thing for people oh, to listen to. Yeah, man, for sure. I'm going to let all my friends know because I, show, I showed my friends your guys' band and they really liked it. So I'm going to send them this podcast and let them know. That's like, dude, yeah, they love Sabotage. I got a couple of buddies like, dude, this is freaking. I'm like, dude. 
I'm gonna talk to the vocals here soon, man. They're like, no way, I'm like, dude, just, just, you know, it's, it's what we do. It's what we do, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome dude cool okay so we kind of talked about this a little bit but so i know you said what you talked about was screaming but like so is singing is that pretty so if i remember correctly your other music besides sabotage this is the first song with like clean vocals is that right yeah so i've been yeah i've been doing singing for about a year now okay so who uh because i wanted, I wanted yeah. to branch out I like that. And, and you sound, just like, I, just, cool. I, want to do, I want to do everything vocally. Like, I don't want to be limited to just this. Like, I'm, I just enjoy vocals. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to vocals. So I just want to, yeah. I want to do everything. I want to be able to do everything that has to do with vocals at, like, the best level that I can do it. Sick. And yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, don't hold, I don't hold myself to it. I never take, like, I can't do this. Like, saying, like, myself, like, telling myself that I can't do something is just not in my thing. I'm just a very, like, I can do this. I can do this. I like that. I'll be able to do it as long as I practice it. So yeah, I'm just very. I want to branch out and just. I just music, man. I love all music. I want to do different things. Like I want to. I don't. Yeah. That's tight, dude. That's. Awesome. I want to be innovative. That's awesome. I want to innovate. And, like, that's uh, that's what I like about relapse. I can't think of any band that sounds like us. So I I want our instrumentals. Like those three guys are the most talented like musicians. I'm scene man like they are so good at their craft and like making up stuff and having their own flavor and i want to do that vocally like i want to add different things like to the vocals and like do things that people maybe haven't heard before and just experiment because yeah i don't i just i don't want to live life playing it safe i just want to do everything and just change the game so yeah man yeah. i love that dude that's awesome so who's like so i know obviously screaming and singing is there, but who, like, inspired you? Like, who are some vocalists that inspired you to want to start, like, doing clean vocals? You sound good. Is there anyone in particular that kind of inspired you? Sebastian, Landon Tours, pretty much those bands that I was, yeah. like, talking about. Yeah, mainly them. Telly from The Word Alive. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly, I'd probably say Noah. Noah from Bad Omens was a big one mm -hmm. for me when I first heard Limit to Never Know. Those are like my two all time favorite songs. Like, Sick. man, I just, that sort of flicked the switch in my head and I was like, I want to do this. I yeah, want to man. Be able to do this stuff. Yeah, that's sick, dude. And yeah, yeah that's cool, man. I, I, did, I did solo stuff as well, mate, as well. Like, yeah. I've taken a lot of inspiration from his solo stuff, especially the plot in you, but his solo stuff is like, yeah, his voice and the way he goes about music is just, yeah, I love that vibe with it. That's sick, dude. That's awesome. That's really cool, man. Are you going to do more singing on the new stuff, or is it all going to just be heavier? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's weird. I think that we've got – I think Sabotage is, like, our heaviest track, but it has mm. singing on it. Yeah. And I like the – yeah, like, I still love heavy music, and I still am going to do just filthy vocals, but I'm not going to rely on it. I'm just going to try and make it impactful and such. Sick. just want to have my own sound. I just don't want to sound like anyone else. We, yeah. Yeah, dude. Your vocals don't really re remind me of anybody. I think they're very unique. I'm like, I'm like dang, dude. Like, li I listened to... I, I went on a little drive to grab something to eat, and I put on Sabotage. Like, it's been a while since I listened to it. I was like, dude, he sounds very unique. I think that's really cool. I'm like, dang, dude. Like, you sound really good. I appreciate that. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like, for me, if I'm going to talk about, like, singers, I'm trying to... You know, I'm still trying to find my voice when it comes to singing, but, like, dude... Who like, um, dude... My favorite singer of all time is Howard Jones from, you know, Kill Switch Engage. I mean, he's, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. I mean, of course, right? I mean, so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's dude. A <laughs> yeah, I also like, um, I like, uh, uh, LJ from Seven Dust. I don't know if he knows or not, but like, I, for me, it's uh -huh. kind of a little weird, um, because they're both black and I'm black. So I just draw a lot of inspiration from them going, like, that's cool that these two African American fellas are playing these heavier bands and because most of the time when you think of like a, a black person it's usually rap and those types of things so i think it's cool like when i see those guys play the type of music that i like it's like dude i want to i just draw a lot of inspiration from them so probably probably those two are my favorite um singers i just like the way they sound and they just have soulful singing voices um i don't know i yeah. just, i really really dig it i'm sure there's some others but like Danny Warsaw, I love his singing voice. I still like him with the vocal. I think he's great. Um, man, there's there's so many. I mean, Brian from uh, from Currents, I think he's great too. Um, 
man, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many bands that I just love that I'm like, their voices are incredible, dude. Adam from Oceano, man. Dude, yeah, he's another one, man. He is freaking brutal. I listen to them in a couple I was about years. to say, he's one of my favorite, like, death call vocals, man. Ascendance is, like, oh, like, 10 out of 10 albums for me as well. That's dude, my, my favorite with Shiano. My, my friend Kyle was obsessed with that album back in high. That's all we listened to. Like, I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good album. Super heavy, but he loved that album. Dude, yeah, his screams are insane. Seriously. Yeah. They're, they're so, a, so good. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else is. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I think uh, the band Jesus Peace has a black screamer, I think. I yeah. don't know. If, so. Yeah, they do. That means sick. Yeah, I don't know too much from them. I, I just think it's, I just think it's cool. I think the band Volumes has a black, I think he's, yeah. I think he's sing. I don't know. I don't yeah, listen to much Volumes, but. Is that yeah. my from Bruce Hill? My Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I first heard of him when he did um I think it was Girl with Glass. I think that's what the song is. Yeah. Uh, the Suicide Silence Memorial Show. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Crazy show, man. Seriously. So in, in, yeah, dude, insane. It was awesome. Cool, dude. Super cool. So I have one more question. Then we got to do a lightning round, and then you and I can just chat after this if you like. Cause we can talk a little more. So, okay, this is this is a big one. So I can't answer this question because I'm not in a band. So I can't really give. I guess I could, but I'm really excited to hear from your perspective. Um, so so let's look. Okay, how about this? Let's say it for me. Let's say I'm coming to you. I'm like, dude, I need some help. I need some advice. What tips would you want to give somebody who are looking to start? A band like what would because i mean you're a very personal guy you're very good at what you do yeah. like what what would you tell let's say what would you tell me like dude ethan i'm looking to start a band dude i want to win a grant i want i want to be grammy nominated like august burns red i'm just kidding <laughs> but uh what, what would you tell yeah. me if i'm asking um, yeah support your scene go to shows make friends uh put yourself out there um for me so in the vice i'm gonna start a thing where so for me, a big thing was if you're a vocalist, like I can't speak of like I would say this would go for it. This is just a, this is the meta really. It's just go to shows, make friends, make connections, talk to people, and then I don't know. I can't like I don't know even like put up vocal covers and stuff like that. You yeah. know, you want to get you want to gain some like interest of yourself. But for me especially, is like if you're a vocalist, I would say get mic grabs and stuff and like show your vocals off in front of people and like that's how you're going to gain some traction that's how well i just know that that's how, that's what worked for me yeah. and for the vice i'm going to do a thing because we play that song and like every show um and with the breakdown it cuts out and it's just vocals and there's two of those so what i'm going to do is anyone that wants to like show off their vocals i'm going to let them do the first breakdown because Sick. the vocal, everything cuts out, and it's just like you're just. It's, everyone's just gonna hear you. So if you nail it, man, like that's gonna be so sick. And I want to give people that opportunity. Like I want people to have the opportunity. Like it helped me getting my grabs and stuff. Help me. So I want to give back and like say, like, dude, like you want to do vocals, like grab the mic for this bit. Like go your hardest and like. You know, I love that, man. I think it's sick. I think, like, helping people like that that really want to, like, have their shot and show off and stuff, like, yeah. and in front of the crowd as well, I think, that, yeah, it can really help people. And I think it's just the perfect song to do it because it, everything cuts out and it's just vocals. So it's, like, it's a daunting one because if you fuck up, you're going to hear it. But if you yeah. ace it, it's <laughs> yeah. insane. So, yeah, that's, yeah. But honestly, going to shows networking making friends connections supporting your scene like goes a long way sick i like that dude pretty uh pretty good stuff man i like that dude man i wish i could come see you guys play but we're uh we're a little far away but that's okay well uh hopefully once you uh... yeah dude i mean hey maybe one day you could tour in the states and if you come anywhere close to me you know i'll be oh, there dude. Dude. there's no babies we'll make it happen dude you know here's the thing though like i'm gonna cover the show I'm gonna I'm gonna freaking call you or message you like, dude, you gotta come out here. I'm gonna give you the biggest hug in the entire world, dude. I'm serious. I'm like, dude, let's bring it in, brother. I'm okay. doing this. I'm a very small dude, so I'll probably just like cuddle into you. <laughs> I'll probably jump up. Yeah, hug you. Dude, I'm gonna be so stoked. That's gonna be awesome, dude. I'm really excited. That's awesome, man. So 
Are you, uh, so how do you, so how do you prepare for, uh, this is not part of the lightning round. I'm not, this just came up in my head. How do you prepare for a show? Like, do you, obviously I assume you warm up, like, let's say, let's say you're playing for like a half hour. Yeah. What do you, what do you do to warm up and get ready? Uh, warm up, um, do some scales, do some lip drills, um, get, do some vows. Cool. Um, hours, try to keep your throat open and I just slowly activate my false cords. So I'll just go like. Yeah. Cool. Getting like more breath, like air to it, and like just slowly pushing it out, and just finding the comfortable, and then you just like you know, I just start like doing some like vows with my streams and stuff, and then that's it. I try, I try not to like do too much. You know what I mean? Like you want yeah. to sort of save your voice, like, make sure it's good. So for me, if you do too much in your warm up, and just sort of take away from the performance but that yeah that's usually what i do yeah cool man that's that's kind of what, kind of what i do when i practice yeah 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 that's cool just man. Good breathing work yeah like diaphragm work just making sure that breath's all good it's going in the right place and yeah yeah man that's pretty that's, much it that's perfect dude yeah that's what i do when i warm up i warm up for like I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, make sure everything's good. And then I, I usually don't let my first, like the, I don't want my first scream to be like when I'm doing the cover. So I do like some practice stuff and then I'll, I'll jump on and I'll practice or do covers and stuff. So yeah, man, I, I do the same thing. Just diaphragm stuff and breathing and, you know, make sure it's because again, like it should, and I'm sure you can attest to this. If it hurts, you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. I <laughs> don't yeah. Don't let it hurt, dude, because it's painful. It's really, yeah. really painful. I do my warm up. I do my warm up, and then I just g myself up hard, like I just I get it. in the zone. Yeah, and get up, in and go. Get up and go. Sick, dude. Yeah. When, are you, when are you playing that one show? I know you announced that show. When is that? Is oh, some... yeah. yeah. When is that? Uh, December the fourth. Also, oh, pretty soon, dude. Is someone? Do you have someone recording it? Because obviously, you know, I'm gonna want to watch. <laughs> um. Well, we don't, but I'm sure there'll be heaps of clips. But I mean, we could get someone to like live stream it or film it or something. That could be sick. Dude, that would be sick. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure someone will record it. But I'm like, dude, I got. Dude, yeah, so that would probably be heaps of like people just filming it and, and tagging us or add it to like Instagram yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, for sure. I'll keep an eye out because I'll definitely want to watch. So, dude, I'm super excited for that, man. That's gonna be really cool. Super excited. Yeah, I'm yeah excited that's a note. Sure. Yeah, a lot of bands Sick. on that, dude. I was like, that's dope. I was like, that's really cool, dude. Yeah. I'm really, yeah. really, really, really happy for you, dude. I think that's awesome. I think it's just incredible. And, uh, dude, you're going to do big things with your band, man. I'm super happy for you. I'm proud of you. You're a great guy. And you're just fantastic, dude. S sincerely. Like, you're a legend, man. Yeah, I dude. love for you. Dude, you too, <laughs> man. Seriously, for sure. Okay, so we got a few lightning round questions. And some of them we already talked about. So I'm just not, we, we already talked about like the bands and stuff, but well, uh, so, okay. What is your favorite movie? Harry Potter. Really? Harry Potter guy, huh? I've been talking to a lot of people that have been to Harry Potter lately. Not, a, not, not my favorite, but I do enjoy it. I do. Oh. Deathly, Deathly Hallows Part 2 was sick. I don't care what anyone, that was a great film, dude. I love it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I loved just all of it. I didn't like Prisoner of Azkaban. That was my least favorite. But yeah, yeah. everything else, I, I I could watch them any day, any time. I've watched them so many times. Every time, I just love it. Sick, dude. So what do you think about... This is just another question popped in my head. So what do you think about Fantastic Beasts? What do you think about that spinoff? What do you think about that? I, um, I haven't watched it. Okay. I think I watched... I watched the first one, but I haven't watched... I mean, because there's a couple, isn't there? So, there's the first one. There's two that are out, and the third one comes out next year. It comes out in May of yeah, next year, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I watched the first one, but I don't really remember too much. I might have to really watch them. Yeah, first oh, one's pretty good. Right. Yeah, second one, wasn't, it, yeah. second one wasn't great, but it wasn't too bad. But yeah, no, they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah Harry Potter's cool. Uh, for me, it's it's got to be Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, Star Wars is my favorite thing ever, dude. That's, That's my Star Wars. Dude. Yeah. Star Wars is like, Dude. What's your favorite one? Favorite Star Wars? Uh, dude, it's, I mean, it's going to be the most generic white boy answer of all time. It's The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, that is that is the one of my favorite movies of all time. Not just because of Star Wars. It's just an amazing film. Like, incredible film. Mine's, mine's Revenge of the Sith. That's my all-time favorite Star Wars. Dude, me... That's, that's up there for me. Dude, I saw all the prequels 
in theaters with my dad. So again, I was born in 93, and the first one came out in 99, and then 2002, 2005. So I saw them all in theaters, so I'm very nostalgic for the prequels. Yeah. Um, so I saw my them mom used to, Yeah. My mom used to cover my eyes when Anakin was getting burned in the slayer. She used to, like, cover my eyes on that one bit when I was in it. Yeah, when he's getting burned to a crystal like a piece of bacon or something. Yeah, dude. When he became, when he becomes Darth Vader, dude, I love that scene. Actually, that scene's amazing. Uh, I'm not. So let me ask. What What's your take on? I'm sure. Have you seen the new ones? Like the new seven, eight, and nine. Have you seen those movies? Um, like Force Awakens. I watched. Seven. I haven't. I, I haven't watched like all of them. Yeah. I watched. I watched, I watched the Force Awakens. I wasn't. I was like, eh. yeah, yeah. Force Awakens is pretty good. I hated the Last Jedi. I did not like Rad Skywalker. Terrible films, dude. For sure. Yeah, I wasn't. I was like, oh, I'm not into it. Yeah, for sure. I do like Rogue One. Rogue One was really good. I actually liked Han Solo as well. So that Darth Vader scene was the sickest. That was one of the sickest scenes ever. In dude, dude, these nipples got so hard in the theater. You have no idea, dude. Screaming. Oh, my, I was so I was so moist. I was like, oh my god. Dude, I know. All It was funny. All the dudes in the theater were like, no way, dude. Everyone's like, I think I'm a theater bunch of guys, and we're all just like freaking out. That was one of the best Star Wars scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. I was like, dude, this is you know, incredible. You know, you know it was amazing, but it's just gone too far now. Fast and the Furious. I used to love Fast and the Furious, and now I'm just at the point where it's like, bro, it just, just needs to die. Did you see? Just kill it. <laughs> it's done. Did you see the new one? Did you see Fast 9? Yeah, I went to the cinemas with two of my mates, and I was sitting in the cinema just like, this is so shit. Dude, it is... Yeah. I saw it with my cousin. He's 14, and I love the kid. He he wanted to go see it with me. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll go. That's not... I mean, I love movies, so... Dude, I lost it when... They legitimately went to space. I was like, okay, we're, we're done. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not doing it anymore. And they're doing, like, two more. So I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't yeah, believe, it. I, I couldn't believe it, dude. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Oh my gosh, it was absolutely hilarious. Fast and the Furious Five. I like Fast and the Furious Five. I feel like yeah, that's Five was good. Shoot. Yeah, Five was sick. I think Six was like, like pushing it. Six was like, it was good, but I think it's like now you're pushing it, and then from then on, it was just like, dude, what the hell? I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude you and i are the same boat yeah i agree i've seen them all and i'm just like i don't know I i'm not a big cars guy but i mean i'm just like i don't know it's just not it's not for me some of the action scenes are cool but i'm just like i'm a story guy like again one of my other favorite movies is like the dark knight i'm a huge batman fan like i need a yeah, good yeah. i need a good story and if it doesn't have a good story i just lose interest dude I'll, I'll give it to Fast and the Furious, especially Fast 9, is that the action scenes were dumb. Yeah, like, just... when, 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 the, when the car grapples around the cliff, I was like, you're just going to be fucking dude, dude, I was howling. I was like, my cousin's like, why are you laughing? I was like, because he's like taking it very serious. It's like very serious. And I'm sitting there just laughing so hard. And he's like totally glued. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm happy to be with you. But I'm just dying the whole time, dude. It's so funny. I'm like, I can't handle this. I just can't handle any more of it. I was, oh, yeah. dude, I was in tears. And I just look at my mates and I was like, you're all kidding. Like, this is actually yeah. happening. Dude, I, I was just, like, I was actually to say that. I'm like, trying to, I'm like, it got me thinking. I'm like, imagine if this was like real life. Like, imagine if like this actually happened in real life. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, no, that's pretty typical. If that's that's happening in real life. Like, yes. <laughs> I was like, if you can do that, like, just go on rogue and just like using your car as a grapple just to like yeah. get around the place. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this, yeah, this is a game for like, gadget type shit right now. Like. <laughs> Dude, imagine leaving the theater. You just see it like outside. You just see this car just grappling. Like, I, dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's. Oh, man, nuts. I leaving the theater and you'd like try and grapple to your car and you just try and like do it in public. <laughs> dude, that's hilarious, man. Yeah, I, I, I can't those movies. I'm like, what are you doing? And you're just like, inspired by Fast and the Furious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it's hilarious. I, I, dude, that's too good, man. That's hilarious. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite film, but I'm sure I'll see the yeah. other ones because I saw the rest. I'm like, I'm one of those guys. I'm a hypocrite. I'm like, I hated the movie, but I got to see what happens next. So I'm going to see the other ones. Oh, oh, I'm the same. I, mean, yeah. I want to see how dumb it can go. I know. I got to see how they're going to top it. Like, not, it's going to get I'm stupider. Watching, I'm, not it the, I'm not watching it for the story now because the story is just chalked, but I yeah. just want to see what's going on. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree with you, though. Fast Five was good. I was like, it was actually not a bad film. And then it just kept getting dumber and dumber. I was like, dude, I feel like I'm losing IQ points watching this film. I, I yeah. was like, dude, this is nuts. Insane, dude. Okay. Sick, dude. All right. Uh, are you, before we move on, are you a horror guy? Do you like horror movies? Yeah, they're my favorite. Yes. The Exorcist is my all-time favorite movie. Is it? Nice, dude. Yeah. Just, I think, purely just for how, like, it was made. Like, I watched some documentaries on it. And, like, do you remember the Scary Maze game? I don't think so, no. Uh, I, so I did that when I was, like, six years old. And it's, like, this game that you play. It's just, like, this little dot that you have to get through a base. Oh. And if you hit the wall. Yeah, okay. And it was like Regan's face, or the, the chick of the exorcist, her face, and it popped up. And, dude, that face traumatized me when I was a kid. Did it? And I think it was just, that was the first time that I'd properly been scared. And it would traumatize me for years. Like, I always really? would just pick that face. Yeah, it was, and it stuck with me. And I just had so much respect for it because it's just like that. I couldn't imagine what that was like back in the day because that movie, like, pioneered so much stuff. Yeah. It sure did. Like it was a game changer back in the day. So, yeah. yeah, and how it was going, like, I watched documentaries, and it was so, like, raw how they did it. Like, in the scene, like, when the when they were in the room, like, he, the priest is reading the uh, Bible to her and stuff and, like, reading the, the like, everything to all that crap. Um, you could see, like, their breath, and that was, like, to give it more, like, atmosphere and, like, make it more chilling. And they actually, like, 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 cooled down the room enough so that their breath would, like, show. Like, it wasn't... Hmm. All the special effects were, like, real. That's what I liked about it. It was just such a raw film. Like, it was yeah. insane how they got some of the shots and stuff. And I was just like, man, that's, like, very... Like, I just loved it. That's sick. So, yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't usually... I don't really get scared. Like, it takes a lot for me to get scared now. Like, I'm pretty yeah. numb to it. Um, yeah. If... Like, the, the type of movies that, like, really get me going and, like, will give me, like, sort of chills are, like, paranormal, like, possession movies. And they're what I really like. But mm. the only thing I hate about horror is, like, there's just not many horrors. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, dude, that's cool, though, man. Yeah, I'm a big horror guy. I, I, I guess I'm more of, like, a thriller kind of guy. Like, I love, like, a good thrill. Like, dude, my, I love Get Out. That's, like, my favorite. I adore that movie, dude. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. I was, okay. That's a good movie. It's a good thriller. It's really, really yeah. good. Yeah. Super. Yeah. I'll message it to me so I don't forget. I'll watch it. Okay. I will. You're gonna. Hopefully, you'll love it. It's like my favorite. I talk about it all the time. So, yeah, that movie's awesome. Okay. Cool, dude. That's great. Yeah, dude. I love. I, I like all. I'm kind of the same way. There's only one movie recently that scared me because it was just so like relatable to my situation. Which uh, it was actually the Boba Duke. That movie scared. <laughs> yeah, dude. Me. But because, yeah, that movie is about, like, holding on to the past and, like, need to let, like, kind of what we talked about earlier, like, letting it go. Yeah. My dad's actually a drug and alcohol counselor, and he actually watched that movie with me. He was downstairs, I was watching it with my sister, because she's never seen it, and he's like, dude, I'm actually going to use this movie in my counseling sessions. Like, you need to let go of the past and move on. I'm like, dude, you're kind of right. And that movie actually, yeah. really, that movie opened my eyes, it actually scared me. Because it's just so, it was just relatable. I was like, dang, this movie actually is freaking me out. And I, it gave me a yeah. ton of anxiety, dude. Yeah, great film, though. Really good film. It's awesome. I'm pretty sure it's an Australian movie as well. It is. Yeah, it is. I was like, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful yeah. film. So, that's awesome. Yeah, I thought it was awesome, though. Sweet, dude. Okay. Good message. Yeah, yeah, really good message. That's why I like horror, because I feel like with horror movies, like, it scares me because some of the stuff that they do is realistic like i won't spoil get out for you but it's so like it talks a lot about racism but not in the way that you think yeah. and i think that's i think that's the scariest part that we still have racism today in this world and i'm like, like i don't even either either i like you or i don't like you it doesn't matter the color of your skin dude like <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. yeah 
Yeah, it never, and that's never bothered me, obviously. I'm like, dude, I just don't even, never thought twice about it, so. But yeah, good film. I'll send it to you. I'll send you the trailer so you can watch it, so. All right, dude. Um, So, we may have talked about this at the beginning, but like, let's let's say, let's say Relapse, you're doing a headlining tour. Who are the three bands that you want to open, for? like, who want me to open for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, honestly, honestly, you're, you're, you're the headliner so three okay. bands below you are we, are we talking realistic or like unrealistic let's go okay let, let's just say realistic because obviously I'm, you, like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say like bad omens is opening for bitches but I really want to play with bad omens you dude, know what I mean? sure dude they can co-headline man absolutely yeah well I mean I really I'd love to play with like the plot in you Sick. Bad omens, like, and probably Normandy to be honest. There you go. I reckon those. Are, I reckon those are the three bands that I want to play with because I just I'd love to chat with those three vocalists because they're all so like, like Landon, Noah, and Philip, like all do like producing stuff and like all these different things. So yeah, I feel like I could learn a lot. Yeah. So I and I just love to like pick their brains and stuff with how they go about music and vocals and like just learn stuff. So, yeah, that that would probably be yeah. And I froth all their music, so th those would be like there you go. Yeah, and I feel like that's a pretty good like mixed bill in a way. Yeah, would like, it's all heavy rock music, but it's different. Yeah, definitely. That would be a sick show. Especially if you guys were like yeah. headlining over like the plot and you bad. I'm like, dude, that'd be so cool. <laughs> that'd be amazing. I mean, yeah. I, like, I would never, it probably, it's never going to happen, but I, yeah, no. I would just love to play with those bands. I mean, it'd be cool, honestly, to even freaking open for them. I think that would be an experience. Like, cool. Yeah. I, I feel like I wouldn't, I feel like I wouldn't want a headline to, like, look up to them. Yeah. So right. I feel like it'd be, yeah, I'd be happy just to open it. Just be like, yeah. Dude. That would be amazing. That's crazy. Like, honestly, right now, like, August Burns Red's on tour with, uh, Fifth Rick King, era and then like like Moss the Flames is the opener. I'm like they're a pretty good sized band. So I mean like I don't know, that's like a stack tour. So honestly, if you guys open for those bands, I feel like it would just it would set it off right and the show would just be off to an yeah. incredible start. That'd be super sick, dude. Yeah. Super sick. I mean we probably get warm up there because we're just so heavy and energetic. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. Dude, honestly that was it. Because honestly, you answer, we had to talk about a lot of those questions that we uh, mentioned at the beginning. Like I asked you, like, do you have any more music coming out? We already talked about that. And, uh, yeah. dude, so I'm like, yeah, we do. Yeah, which is cool, it's man. Done. Yeah, which is awesome. So, dude, is there anything else, like, that you want to say about yourself or the band? Do you want to, you know, anything like that at all? Um, listen to us. Listen to us. Follow us. <laughs> yeah. Stay. Yeah, just like yeah, get keen on new music and yeah, stay dude. level headed in these like rough times and yeah, look yeah. after each other and fix yourself it. and get stronger and yeah, be positive. That's yeah, spread love, not we, negativity. We love this guy. We love having him on the channel because this is what Chandler Burton Entertainment is all about. We want to spread positivity, we want to talk openly about mental health, we wanna help people. So this guy's perfect. Subscribe, subscribe and Buy this guy's Patreon and all that stuff. Follow him on socials. You're the man, bro. You're the king. Dude, I appreciate you. Thank you, you so much for having me. Um, yeah. Dude, absolutely. Very, very blessed to meet you. Oh. This is awesome. Yeah, dude, absolutely, man. I really appreciate you coming on. And again, sharing your story and just talking with me, dude. Again, I think this is going to help people. And it was funny. It was eye-opening a lot of parts. I think a lot of people are going to relate to it. So, dude, I should be the one, like, thanking you, taking time out of your day. Again, I know you're busy. You got full-time job and stuff like that. But, again, I really – dude. There you go, brother. My man. <laughs> All right, man. Well, guys, this has been the Chandler Burton Podcast. Again, make sure you subscribe like it's going to be on all social media platforms on friday so thank you all so much ethan dude my dude there he is <laughs> thank you so much brother thanks for, thanks for being on man i appreciate it anytime bro yeah dude all right take care man